continue this little series? Does everything just go back in the box? Uh, Christmas seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? I, I was just thinking about that. We're doing this little series, and, and that's how fast we forget, and, and we kind of put it out of our minds. Like, I mean, we're, we're back to living our lives, right? Uh, and, and, and some of that's fine. I mean, we need, sometimes the stuff we put up in our house and stuff, it, it, we, it does look like clutter. We've got to get that taken care of, and, and, and I know maybe somebody out there still has their Christmas lights up. Maybe you're tempted to leave them up all year long, so you have to put them up again. I know how that goes, uh, but, mo- but, but sooner or later, you know, we gotta, I got to get them down, right? So, so we, we, we take it all down. The danger is that we forget these gifts that God gives us at Christmas and that he would have us live in all year long, and so our focus then is, is the gifts, the things that we shouldn't be putting away that God gives us at Christmas, Okay. Uh, so today it's uh, what am I doing here? Uh, the gift of meaning. What am I doing here? Uh, the gift of meaning. Uh, there was a traveler, uh, an explorer, if you will, and, and he went through Egypt, uh, and and, uh, and and he saw this one statue. Uh, of a king, and we think it was Ramses, uh, the, the statue, um, and, and, um, it, uh, and, and this was the inscription on this is what it looked like. Uh, my name is Ozymandias. Now, I may be pronouncing that wrong. I really worked to see if I could get it right. It's a transliterated Greek of, 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 of Ramses' throne name, a part of Ramses' throne name. So I may not have it right. Okay, so I'm just going to take a shot at it. Ozymandias, okay? Uh, and if I say it differently the second time, just forgive me. But I think it's Ozymandias. And, and so he came upon this, right? Uh, and this had been a huge statue, huge statue, right? Uh, and and it, what it had said was, King of kings, my name is Ozymandias. King of kings, look upon my works, ye mighty, and despair. Looks, it'd be great in the film, wouldn't it? <laughs> look upon me and despair, right? But it was there. And you know what? He was a big dude. I mean, you stood up to him back when, he'd he'd take your life right now, huh? He built great stuff. He was awesome. He he had these huge things that he accomplished. But but when this guy came upon this great statue, it was kind of cut off the knees, and, and the head was laying over here in the sand, you know? That's what happens with all the stuff that we do. You know, we're, we're talking about purpose and meaning. And, and sometimes we look to find that purpose and meaning, significance. I, like I said uh, when we began today, I, I think that's something that God put in us, that we want to have significance, that we, we want to accomplish something, that we, that, that we want to, to, to say that, that I stood for something, that it had meaning, my life had meaning, right? Uh, and, and so oftentimes we, we, we look at the sandcastles we can build. We look at the great things we can do that makes us greater than somebody else, right? I'm the king of kings. Look upon my works, ye mighty, and despair, right? A few hundred years, the traveler comes upon his, his uh, broken up statue, huh? Yeah, his, his works weren't that mighty. He didn't accomplish much. I think when we look uh, to fill up that need uh, for significance and meaning in what we do, we, we kind of end up in the same place. And, and somehow inside we know that's where we're going to end up. Um, the great things that we can accomplish. We, we know it's important. I mean, we, we say to our kids at a fairly young age, what, what are you going to do with your life? Right? That always kills me. Well, what are you going to do li- with your life? I, I'm, I'm now in the habit of saying to my kids, I don't know what I'm doing with my life yet, right? I mean, you don't ever know what you're going to do with your life, it seems. Isn't that right? And yet we kind of nail them because we know it's so important for them to have, to to want to do something. But I don't think that's the key to knowing purpose and meaning inside. There was, uh, in in the book of Genesis, you have the story of Cain and Abel. How many of you heard of Cain and Abel? Right, first murder, right? Cain uh, murdered his brother Abel. Uh, and, and, and so then uh, uh, it, it says there that, that he went away from the presence of God. Really kind of interesting. He went away from the presence of God. And he did great stuff. All right? It says he built a city. Do you guys ever build a city? Huh? Anybody here build a whole city? Cain built a whole city. Didn't matter. He was out from the presence of God, right? Didn't matter. 
And then it, it said what his descendants did. They were the father of music. Oh, what a wonderful gift, right? The, 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 the father of music. Didn't matter. They were out from the presence of God. One of his descendants was the first guy to have two wives. Man, he had it all, didn't he, huh? <laughs> didn't matter. He was out of the presence of God. And, and by the way, whenever that's in the scripture, it's in, nothing good ever comes from two wives. Just, just, just take, take my, read the text yourself. Nothing ever good comes from that. Uh, and, and so you have this, uh, these descendants they talk about it and they're, they're outside of the presence of God and they do these great things but, but the meaning is clear that it doesn't matter what they achieve is like uh, sand going through your fingers at the seashore huh? and then it talks about another son Zeth who is a son of promise the the one that walks with God and, and, and from his line comes Enoch that he walks so closely with, closely with God that one day he was not and he was just taken up to be with God. When I went to the seminary, um, one of the things that, that, that really most of us there had, had to wrestle with was should I go to the seminary? Does that kind of make sense? I know for Jane and I, it was, it was uh, quite a decision, and, and we, we had, we'd wrestled, we were very settled in our life, and, and um, I was ready to be a teacher for the next 30 years and call it quits, you know, and, and um, uh, uh, this wouldn't let go of us, and, and so we, we went to seminary, and um, the very first couple we met there, we, uh, we had been there a couple days, we'd gotten an apartment, got settled, and I got a call. Hey, there's this guy coming in for Ohio. He really needs somebody to help him unload the truck, he and his wife. So Jane and I went over, and, and we, uh, it was on a th three stories up. That was the apartment. You know, it, it, probably the cheapest he could get, right? So up the steps, you know, all day. But through that, uh, Lee and I, that's his name, we became very good friends. Lee and Janie, uh, uh, and we, we were really tight in the seminary. But that day, we talked about how we got there, right? And, and we each had a story, but, but, but Lee's story was that he was really struggling with what God wanted him to do in his life. And, and he was agonizing over what God wanted him to do. Uh, and he said the, the breakthrough for him finally came when he talked to this old retired pastor. And this guy sat down with him and he finally said, Lee, God's will for you is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. God's will for you is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. It's not about what you do, Lee. It, it, it's not about like measuring up to what God wants you to do and you won't find fulfillment or meaning outside of doing what God somehow wants you to do and you gotta figure it out, pal, right? No, God's will for you is to know life in Christ Jesus. And that's where you'll find meaning and purpose and significance in your life in Christ Jesus. And he shared with me how that just took this huge load off him and he realized that he didn't have to find his meaning. He didn't have to find his purpose. That Jesus was with him and his meaning and purpose was in his identity in the Savior. I, this is what I want you to take home today, okay? I'm gonna talk for a while, you know I talk for a while, but, <laughs> but, 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 but this is it, right? God's will for you, you know, put, put your own name there, God's will for you is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And, and this isn't just about heaven by and by, you know? It's not like, oh, God's will for you is to have a get out of, get out of hell free card. That's not what this is about. God's will for you is to have life in Christ Jesus, and that life is right now. Yeah, the, the, the Bible talks about two kinds of life. Bios, we get the word biology, right? That's, that's the biological life we live. And, and, and zoe, it, it's, it's life with God, right? It's life connected with God in relationship. That's what this old pastor shared with Lee. That life isn't about what you do, it's about who you are. That's what God would share with you. You see, uh, we, we were created <laughs> to be connected with God in relationship. 
and nothing can have any meaning that will last apart from that relationship. Old Ozzy found that out, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, bow before me, um, be afraid of me. And the, the guy, his statue's cut off of the knees. Doesn't matter what he done. It's about this relationship we have with God. That's where we find purpose and, and, and meaning. And you know, we know that just, just in the lives that we live, don't, don't we? Uh, if, if you've had kids that are grown up and left, haven't you experienced like all the stuff you did for the kids, you do the same stuff now, but it's kind of empty? Have you experienced that? It's like, what's the meaning here, right? There is not much meaning because they're not there anymore. You're not living in a relationship there with the kids, right? Or, or, or when you're married, you experience this as well, right? You clean the house because your wife likes you to clean the house, right? I, I'm, I'm, maybe you don't do that, right? Or, 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 or you, you do the yard because you know what? Hey, we, we need to get that. We need to get that done, right? Life becomes full when we live it out in relationship. Isn't that right? And stuff that doesn't have meaning now takes on meaning. The greatest, the thing that this points to, all the, the vector, everything, every relationship points to it, that gives our lives overarching meaning, is this relationship with God in Jesus Christ, God's will for you, is to every day live in this eternal life that God gives you in Jesus. This eternal life starts the moment you come to this living relationship of faith in Jesus Christ. This is where meaning and purpose abides. Everything flows from this, and if it doesn't, if it's sandcastles and stuff I do, we end up empty. On the day of Pentecost, uh, you know, on the day of Pentecost, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one of my head. All right, Christmas, uh, I want to read, for unto you uh, is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This is the message of Christmas, right? The, the, this personal God who steps into our world. For unto you. Are you part of that? Did Jesus come to you? It's about relationship. God isn't just out there. He, he became your brother. He, he stepped into whatever burden you're living with right now. He stepped into whatever shadow that you're struggling under. He stepped into that place where the brokenness of life has especially touched you. He stepped into our world, he steps into our life. He continues to step into your life. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He steps into our life to restore life the way it was meant to be. To give us purpose and meaning in this relationship with him. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, a savior. There's something personal about that. I remember um, I used to go uh, skin diving all the time. I lived in Corona Del Mar and we would go to Laguna uh, and um, you know, we'd go down 20 or 30 feet and pop back up and we'd be out there for hours. And, and one day my, my brother went with me um, and, and um, you know, you go out, you always gotta go out where there's rocks because then the seaweed has something you can grow from and so then there's fish out there and we were after fish, right? So, so we were out there for a couple hours, my brother and I, and, and we pop up after, after he went down, we, po we popped up and he didn't look good. Um, I remember his face was kind of white and I said, whoa. And he said, I, I, I gotta go in. He says, I, I'm all dizzy and I gotta go in. And I said, okay, let's go. And, but it had been a couple hours and as we were going in, the surf had really come up. It was pretty, pretty uh, violent. Uh, but it was nothing we hadn't handled before up on the rocks. Right? So, so I get up on the rock and I think he's right behind me and, and he's almost fallen back in, which had been very dangerous because then a wave comes and it's not a good thing. And, and uh, so, so without thinking about it, I just reached down and I grabbed him up, right? Very easy for me to do. It, it was, it was I, I wouldn't have given it a second thought, right? Um, but he was, he was so in need of somebody helping him that for years he talked about how I'd saved him. 
He said, yeah, he was like, he was like Hercules reaching down, and I, he, I, I'd always be embarrassed, you know, for years. But when you need a savior, that's kind of the deal, right? It becomes personal. He had blown out his eardrums, see? And he had all this pain, and he was totally disoriented, and he couldn't do it for himself. To have a savior becomes personal. Where is that nail-pierced hand reaching down to pick you up? See? Christmas is about this personal God that comes for you, who becomes your brother, who, who reaches out to help you when you can't help yourself, to give you life the way it was meant to be in relationship with him. And, and this Savior is Christ the Lord. He is the one, the only one that can do that. God in human flesh personally coming to you and lifting you up every day in who he is and who you are in him. Now, we'll do the Pentecost thing. The day of Pentecost. You know, P Peter stood up, right? And he started preaching. And, and he was telling all the Jews that were gathered there in Jerusalem and, and he, from afar, he was preaching that, that hey, hey, he talked about Jesus and he says, and, and he said, and you killed the Lord of life. You killed him. And he rose again on Easter morning, right? So he's preaching this stuff. And, and, and they were all cut, like, what the heck are we gonna do? In fact, that's what the text says. It says this, brothers, what shall we do? Everybody say, do. do. And that's what Peter said. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. It's not about what you do. It's turning away from what you do. That's what repentance means, turning away. It's not about what you do, folks. That's what he's saying here. Turn away from what you do. It's not about that. Turn instead to what Jesus Christ has done for you. Turn away from what you can accomplish. Are you clawing yourself to a place of purpose and meaning and fullness before God? Turn away from that. It ain't going to work. Turn away from your sandcastles. It ain't going to do it. Turn to what Jesus Christ has done for you. Through this, to this relationship that he gives you through the forgiveness of sins. And it's such a tight relationship that he will give you his spirit and make his home within you. Whew. That's where you'll find purpose and meaning. As a daughter and son of a God most high. Oh, and, and this wasn't just for them, it's for you. He goes on and says the promise. You know, promise, isn't that a great word? If I got to depend on a promise, that it's not what I do, right? Isn't that a cool word? Promise, you know? If it's a promise, it ain't about me. It's not about what I can do. It's about what somebody else promises me, right? The promise is for you and for your children. Read the rest of it with me. And for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Is that you? Right now God's spirit is touching your heart and he's saying, yeah, it's you. And I want to give you a life that was meant to be a, an identity that, that flows over into everything else in your life. The identity in which you find significance and meaning and purpose. Not now, certainly, it, it changes how we live our life. It, it's it's kind of like putting the sunglasses on. It changes the way you see. By the way, that really, does that ever happen to you at the beach? I mean, I, I, I put the sunglasses on, and I actually felt cold. I had to take them off, and, and put, you know, because I, I put the sunglasses on, I was putting the sweatshirt on, I thought, this is crazy, I didn't need it before. It, it just, when you see things one way or the other, it changes you. God wants you to see yourself as who you are in Jesus Christ. It changes you. On Christmas, uh, the angels, right, the angels came to the shepherds over Bethlehem. And they proclaimed that, that, that in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And you know what the shepherds did? They reacted. They were changed. The first thing they did was this. They said, let's go to Bethlehem and see. Let's. You know, that, that always got me. Let's. I wonder, you know, they, they didn't say, hey, I'm going. Are you going? Are you going? Are you going? No, they said, let's. 
all of a sudden, because the gods, the spirit of God through the angels had come upon all of them, they were a let's. They weren't a me. They weren't an I. They weren't an individual. They were a family. You ever get that? Isn't that cool stuff? Let's. It changes our identity. Let's go to Bethlehem and, and let's see this Jesus. Today, I want you to see the Jesus. I want you to see that he's for you. I want to see that you have identity and meaning and purpose in him, in this relationship of grace, forgiveness, and love that he gives you. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing. And then when they had seen Jesus, this is what they said. They, they said when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed. They spread the word. It changed them. They couldn't help but give what they'd received. I remember um, the, the, uh, the day we got married in, in South Dakota, it was hot and muggy, and they had this um, parade down the center, so it was really hard to get there. And, um, and someone said to me, someone said to me, oh boy, we're, we're sorry about all, oh, then it, ra- <laughs> then, then it rained, and, and the, the aunt that was supposed to make a lavender cake made a green cake. Uh, and, and we were, we were in, our, in her parents' backyard, so we had, we had wet green cake, right? I mean, it, it, every, everything went wrong, right? And, and, and someone, uh, someone said to me, oh, I'm sorry all this happened. And I said, hey, man, I don't care. I'm getting married. I mean, I'm married. What else matters? That's, that's these guys, right? That's these guys. And they're sharing it. And then... And then they said this, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God. They went back to their sheep. They went back to being husbands and fathers. They went back to their responsibilities. But in all they did, they took their identity as people who had seen the Savior. In all they did, they glorified and praised God. That's the gift that God would give you today. Here, let's go to this week, okay? So this week, where are you struggling with meaning and purpose in your life? Where are you looking to fill this need other than in relationship with Jesus? That's, that's an empty place. Where are you looking to be like Ozymandias? <laughs> right in these places. Receive anew God's gift of meaning and purpose through relationship with Jesus, through the life that he gives you. And in your life, where have you lost sight of living out your identity in Christ? Where have you lost sight of, of, of following with the shepherds, telling everybody you know, huh? Being the ambassadors of Christ, the, that identity that he gives us in himself. Where have you lost sight of praising God in, in everything you do? It's not what you do. It's knowing who it is that's doing it. That's what fills you up and gives you meaning and purpose. Receive anew by faith God's presence and purpose and meaning, not as a way to achieve your purpose, but to know anew the fullness of living out the purpose God gives you as you live out your life with Jesus. Yeah, God's will for you is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. To know life with him every day. And the joy of knowing it's not about building sandcastles. It's about living in him. And that's grace. Amen. Now may the peace of God which pass all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life never ending. Amen.